further face in the right way. Affirmative. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, we're now recording for the October 27, 2020 Forest of Cold St. Phillips Council meeting. Thank you very much, Claudine. We'll call the meeting to order with uh, who we have with us this evening, and that's Councillor Neri, Councillor Bartlett, Councillor Hanlon, Councillor Stuart Sharp, and absent with notice this evening is Deputy Mayor Laham, and uh, Councillor Harding is virtual. And we also have Jeff Waller, the uh, Director of Economic Development, and Nicole Clark, Director of Recreation, uh, Charlie Hamlin, Director of Public Works, and also our Chief Administrative Officer and Director of Financial Operations, Tony Pollard. So thank you everyone. And uh, can we have the adoption of the minutes? So Minutes. Sorry, the adoption of the agenda. So moved. Moved by Councillor Barton. Seconded, seconded by Councillor Hanlon. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Whatever you read, we'll, we'll, we'll vote on what you read out. Okay, thank you. Sorry, you were something. No problem. No uh, problem. We have no delegations or presentations this yeah. evening, so we'll go to the adoption of the minutes. So moved by uh, Councillor Hanlon, Second. seconded by Councillor Neary. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. And now we go to uh, our CAO to report, uh, Mr. Tony Pollard. Thank you, Worship. I'm not sure I want to make folks uh, and Ross to try to put something together at the last minute, actually. We're uh, currently going through the budget process for uh, next year, 2021. Managed to have some internal meetings for most of the day, and, and we're, we're a good way through, at least from the internal perspective. We're just down now to try and to uh, make more sense around some of the items that are there. And then we'll sit with council, and then we'll be doing our public presentation sometime towards the end of November. Currently in the process of negotiations as well, today was the first day uh, back at the table, and uh, we just passed for our, I guess, our response to their third round uh, presentation or third round submission, and we'll be back again at the table early tomorrow morning. The uh, note here for Guy Fox Night, uh, there's a picture uh, contest, I guess, where we're asking folks to submit pictures to us by the 5th of November by noon. Uh, backyard or beach fires, uh, obviously not encouraging bonfires, so but just pictures, and then there'll be a prize uh, of some kind uh, to celebrate uh, the Guy Fox night. Uh, next week, uh, I will be attending the Municipal Asset Management Technical Working Group for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and that is virtual, and as well, the Municipality of Newfoundland Labrador virtual conference is next week, and I'm not sure how many. Councillors have signed up, uh, but that is uh, the week of November 4th, I think, weekend November 4th for the, in that time frame. Just got the notice this afternoon, actually just came in, that we did get approval for our disaster assistance, which is the, the outfall uh, on, down on the, by the wastewater treatment plant. So as long as, I guess, our expenditures fall within the compliance for federal funding, we should be okay, but we got the approval letter saying what we had submitted was certainly uh, coverable expense. So that, that's, that's some good news. Um, the Ball Family Festival virtual run and bike race was completed, and we actually have a, a winner from this town in the youth category, I suppose. Actually, one of this 100 kilometers bike ride over 10 particular days. Can't release the name until we go through all the obligatories in terms of parents and things of that nature. But that's good news and congratulations to all who took place in that. And uh, so much my report to worship. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's great to know we got some uh, disaster relief fund. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, okay, Councillor Harding with our planning and development report. Thank you, Worship. Uh, firstly, uh, just get some clarification, Tony. Was that on both uh, disaster relief applications, the one for Spurls Road and the one for Portugal Cove side? I think so. Carol, I'd go back and check again. That, that crossed my mind just when I got it because 
I know it was definitely, we, we did it in, in two phases, but I think we submitted both. It doesn't specifically address any dollar amounts in the letter. All it says that our application was approved, but I, I certainly think we could do it. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Planning and Development Committee met Tuesday, virtually October 20th, 2020. In attendance was Deputy Mayor Jeff Laham, Councillor Johnny Hanlon, Tony Pollard, CAO and Director of Financial Operations. Absent with notice was Daryl Harding and Les Spurl, Planning and Development Coordinator. Also in attendance was Carol McDonald, Mayor, Ashley Linehan, Planning Technologist, and Holly Duffett, Planning, excuse me, Planning Technician for Ashley Linehan and Holly Duffett, Planning Technologist. Item 1.1, Civic Number 270 to 272, Witch Hazel Road, single dwelling with subsidiary apartment. The committee reviewed this application in accordance with plan policy RES-1, development regulations 3060, 3360 and 102 and Schedule C of the residential low density. The motion reads as follows. The committee recommends that the application to construct a single dwelling with subsidiary apartment at Civic Number 720, excuse me, 270 to 272 Witch Hazel Road be granted approval in principle in accordance with the town's municipal plan and development regulations 2014-2024 and all other regulatory bodies of government, specifically development regulation 102. And that's so moved. Second. Councilor Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 1.2, Civic Number 21 Farm Road, Business Office. Committee reviewed this application in accordance with Development Regulations 33 and 102, Schedule C, Residential Medium Density, and Motion Number 2018-377. Motion reads as follows. Committee recommends that the application to establish an office online training services as a home occupation at Civic Number 21 Farm Road be granted approval in principle in accordance with the town's municipal plan and development regulations 2014, 2024, and all other regulatory bodies of government, specifically development regulation 102. And that's so moved. Any questions, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 2.1, Town of Pooch Cove proposed amendment to the St. John's Urban Region Regional Plan. The Planning Department is in receipt of correspondence from the Town of Pooch Cove proposing to amend the St. John's Urban Region Regional Plan. The amendment proposes to redesignate various lands throughout the town to coincide with the regional plan and with the town's proposed municipal plan and development regulations 2020 to 2030. Motion reads as follows. The committee recommends that council ratify correspondence forward to the town of Pooch Cove advising that Portugal Cove St. Phillips has no objections to the proposed St. John's urban region regional plan amendment. And that's so moved. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Stewart Sharp. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The other items that were discussed are in section three and there were 18 permits issued from October 2nd to October 15th. And worship that uh, finalizes my report. Thank you very much. And worship, could we just uh, take a little quick pause? Yeah, uh, we're having difficulties for some reason. There's some participants trying to get in and they can't get in via Zoom. So they've had just a couple of minutes. Of sure, okay. Yeah. I was going to ask if uh, Councillor Neary or Councillor Barclay had something on uh, 1.2 because I saw you looking at me and I didn't know. I agree. Well, I was confused. I thought Claudia was looking at me, but she's looking at me. Jeff. Jeff was like, oh, good. Yes, what's why I was looking at me? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Look at another text. I don't know. <laughs> Do you want me to read it again? Uh, past three, we're, we're, we're yes, it's being recorded anyway, so we're probably not meeting. Um, cool. Someone there. 
Can they just call in and listen? Did you get a phone number? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, he's pretty good, but just technical difficulties, Daryl. We'll be back with you in a minute. Please stand by. All good. We stop recording. Yeah, you're still recording. Oh, still there. My voice is recorded, sir. Thank you. Well, we can edit it later. Okay, you can carry on. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to, we're finished with the planning development, so now we'll have our uh, recreation. Uh, Councillor Stewart Sharp. Thank you, Your Worship. Recreation Community Services met Monday, October the 19th. President was myself, Councillor Neary, Councillor Hamlin, uh, Director of Recreation Community Services, Nicole Park, and also present was. Um, Carol McCallum Mayor. Number one, special events, Christmas events. Staff are working towards creating a safe and fun Christmas events that are approved within the public health service measures. Once details are confirmed, information will be posted for residents. Number two, community grants, 2.1 Team Perry Curling. Team Perry consists of four youth under the age of 16 three of which are residents of Port Colson Hills. They will be competing in the under 18 provincials taking place in Stephenville, planned for January of 2021. The grant request is to assist with the team's expenses, such as equipment, travel, registration fees. Motion reads, committee recommends council approve a $200 community grant to Team Perry Curling. Seconded by Councilor Hamlin. Any questions, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number three, other business. 3.1 Portugal Colt St. Phillips Adventures Board Game. Portugal Colt St. Phillips Adventures Board Game campaign began on October 16th. The funds raised will assist students from Portugal Colt St. Phillips at Beachy Colt Elementary, Brookside Intermediate and Prince of Wales Collegiate. Thank you to all the sponsors for their contributions. Games are on sale via EA services, which can be found at www.portugalpc, sorry, pcsp.ca. And so it's my report. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll go to Public Works with Councilor Barclay. Thank you, Mary McDonald. Public Works, we met on Wednesday, October 21st, this is a virtual meeting. President was myself as chair, Deputy Mayor Mahan, Councilor Harney, Sheriff Hammond, Director of Public Works, and Mayor McCann was the Director of Staff President. Item number one is Streets, Fleet, and Waste Management. It's a traffic common letter. The committee reviewed another letter of request for traffic common measures to the Brad Blues Road area. The committee has requested the Public Works Department delay the implementation of those measures until the total of the project detour of traffic has been finalized. 1.2 on the roads. The committee reviewed an engineering report regarding stormwater in the area of Larkspur, Maine. The committee has requested the Public Works Department to provide estimates for the suggested work of the area. These estimates will be reviewed by the committee and the solution will be recommended as part of the 2021 budget. 1.3 roads upgrades 2020. As part of the roads upgrades 2020, the committee reviewed an engineering design of stormwater management in the area of School Road. The 
The committee has endorsed the design be part of the road upgrades in that area to better manage stormwater and therefore enhance the life cycle of those assets. Item number two, under water and wastewater equipment. The committee reviewed two requests for quotes for the U-35 excavator buckets and parts to assist with operational inefficiencies within the town's water and wastewater division. These items were included as part of the 2020 budget. The motion reads as follows. The committee recommends the Atlantic Powertrain and Equipment Incorporated be awarded the contract for U-35 excavator buckets and parts in the amount of $10,500 plus applicable taxes. So moved. Second. Seconded by Councillor Harvey. Any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Under transportation and works, roads, residents' concerns regarding road shouldering and pothole conditions on provincially maintained roadways within Portugal Coast St. Phillips have been communicated to the Transportation and Works Department. And, and it seems like this is a, an item that we're, we're reading all the time, but uh, just to let residents know, we are very uh, determined to get this work done. And uh, Mr. Hammond is always contacting uh, DW try to put some pressure on them, so uh, you feel your pain as well. Under other business projects, at this time, the committee would like to remind residents that 2020 infrastructure projects are continuing throughout the community weather committee. We ask that residents please use caution and slow down approaching these areas, and thank you for your cooperation and patience. And there is Thank you very much. Well, sure. If I may, Your Worship. Uh, just a second. Now we have Councillor Hardy uh, Hanlon first. Go ahead. Uh, this is pertinent. This is pertinent to the PW report. That is this is this is too. This is a. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was your report, Johnny. I'll leave you. No, it's uh, transportation works is now transportation infrastructure. Just as FYI, we should change the heading. Okay. Go well, ahead, Daryl. Okay, okay Councillor Hardy. I uh, got a call this afternoon uh, just to follow up at part where uh, where our uh, director will be contacting transportation and infrastructure. Uh, ambulance was called to the rock cut today. The washouts on the right hand side of the road in the rock cut. A uh, lady was getting out of her car and uh, had a, either a bad sprain or a broken ankle. We don't know. But uh, that's just one more thing that we can put off uh, in your letter. Uh, Charlie, if you can, to uh, transportation infrastructure to see if we can get those to address it. Yes, I will certainly uh, get a hold of uh, somebody at the uh, transportation infrastructure. We have been after transportation infrastructure to do the sides of the road, and I do notice that they've got a lot of it done on Thorburn Road and Bennett's Road. So yep. they're, they are getting active with it. And another thing, it's my Worst nightmare is then two lanes for the boat traffic. And if they had used both lanes, maybe they wouldn't be up in the rock cut. So that's another reason I have to go to transportation and infrastructure with this issue now. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, no worries. Uh, what's happened is the shoulder is so badly eroded there that uh, the, the cars are actually lining up farther out into the pavement area because they can't get in on the shoulders either. So uh, thanks for that. It is definitely, thank you very much. Okay, so now we'll go to economic development with Councillor Anthony, sorry. Thank you, Your Worship. Economic development met on Monday, October 19th. President was myself as chair, Councillor Stuart Sharp, Councillor Bartlett, and Director of Economic Development, Jeff Lawler. Also present was Mayor McDonald and uh, Town Clerk Claudia Murray for item number one, of which I should mention that Jeff Lawler was absent for and he recused himself and such. Uh, one, economic development and tourism, 1.1, community gateway signs, RFP. The committee discussed the five proposals submitted for the community gateway signs, RFP. Upon approval of council, the successful proponent will proceed with the design and planning portion of the project. Once a finalized design is completed, council will make a decision on proceeding to the fabrication and installation phase. This process will be detailed in the contract between the town and preferred supplier prior to project initiation. Motion reads as follows, and there is a change to the wording. I'll read it the way we'd like it introduced. 
committee recommends that council award the community gateway signs contract to Lehman signs and visa -vis graphics to proceed with designing and planning two primary and three secondary signs at a cost of $5,690 plus HST. So moved. A second. Seconded by Councillor Stewart Sharp. Any questions or discussion? Yes, Councillor Hannah. I just had to say uh, <laughs> something on the signs because everybody knows I've been asking about these signs now for seven years. And I'm glad to see that this actually got something about installation in the, in the motion. Maybe it's not in this particular step, but maybe we'll get them before September of next year. <laughs> Optimism, hey, optimism, Councillor Hammond. Seven, hey, you know, seven was a good year, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven is good for something, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I just, I had to say something. We are saying you cut the ribbon on that one. Anybody else? Yes. Hey, yes. Marcia? Yes. Um, just for clarity, this is for the design, the design only of five signs, is that correct? Uh, the, the design and planning of such, yes. Okay, but not the actual signs themselves? No, no, sir, I don't believe that would be the case. It would just be the design and planning of such. Then we'll go to the next step of the signs, then the installation. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, anybody else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Uh, number two, marketing and communications, 2.1, 2021 budget consultations. We would like to thank all those who came out to our public budget consultation meeting on Sunday, October 18th. We continue to encourage everyone to give us your input. You can fill out the online form, message us on social media, or contact us directly by phone or email. The next public meeting is scheduled for November 22nd. Number three, heritage, 3.1, heritage members. Committee reviewed three requests to joining the Heritage Committee. Motion reads as follows. Committee recommends that the town appoint Janice Drover, Robert Stapleton, and Jennifer Dwyer to the Heritage Committee. So moved. Seconded for that motion. Seconded by Councillor Stuart Sharp. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Compromised? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Uh, 3.2, St. Bartholomew's Cemetery. The committee reviewed a request from the Heritage Committee to complete a topographic survey of the area to determine next steps in the conservation plan for the cemetery. Staff are evaluating options and how to proceed with the project. 3.3, Pickles Ridge Memorial RFP. The RFP for the Pickles Ridge Memorial is now open. The deadline for submission is Thursday, November 5th. 3.4, Heritage Place Regulations. Further to the notice of motion at the last public council meeting that outlined revisions to the policy, staff updated the heritage place regulations policy adopted April 2010 and therefore put forward the following motion. Committee recommends that council adopt the amended heritage place regulations this 27th day of October 2020. So moved. Second. Seconded by Councilor Berkman. Any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Here. Other business, 4.1, flu shot promotion. The town is supporting Breakwater Pharmacy in a public awareness campaign to encourage residents to get their flu shots. Many staff and council are scheduled over the next week to receive their vaccinations. I indeed got mine as well and didn't even get a sore arm from it. I was very happy. And just one other uh, item just to mention there that, uh, that wasn't included in the report, just wanted to share that the uh, sustainability conference was held last week. And um, sorry, my day's confused. Was held last week and uh, myself and uh, Tony Pollard and Councillor Harding all were in attendance to that. And uh, I just wanted to make mention, I think they did a fabulous job. It was a three day virtual conference. And they did a really great job at being able to give you lots of opportunity and keep you informed and, and keep people engaged. So I just wanted to mention that that took place and uh, myself and uh, Councillor Harding for sure, I know have been in touch and have lots of notes that we'll be able to bring back forth to you folks at some point in the future. Great. And so it's my report, thank you, Your Worship.
Thank you very much. And uh, we have protective services with Councilor Hanlon. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, protective Service Committee, we met on Monday, October the 19th. President was myself as chair, Councilor Bartlett, Councilor Neary, Fred Hallett, one of our co chiefs, Heather Coggin, our employee public relations administrator, uh, and Mayor Kermit Donald, if I'm not mistaken, Jim Page was actually absent with yes. all this for this one. All right. Item number one, commissioners, you did send a line of report on this one enforcement. MEO has been in contact with two separate construction companies regarding supplies and tools stolen from active billing sites. Patrols have been notified to increase monitoring of the active billing sites for the community. Dumping activity has been reported in commercial dumpsters at multiple locations around the town. More reports have also been received from contractors and the local company. Trash dumping and litter is an ongoing concern at Rainbow Gully parking lot and the area surrounding it. There is a definite increase in the number of masks being discarded in the area as well. Suggestions have been made to increase refuge bins in the area to help mitigate this issue. Item number two, fire emergency services updates. A total of five responses since the last meeting on October 5th, from medical to extra service, extra service calls, which was assistance to ambulance crews. One garbage fire and one down wire. 2.2 training, October 5th, fire scene and evidence preservation. An online presentation from Council Jim French from the RNC. On October 12th, there was no training due to the Thanksgiving Day holiday. 2.3 other activities. Fire prevention week flew up with a parade on October 10th. All provincial COVID motorcade guidelines were followed. <clears throat> Training containers have been delivered and placed at the depot on October 7th. Thank you to Public Works Department for prepping the location and completing the groundwork for these containers. The modifications for window, door, and link openings that are all that remain. Captain Chris Donovan, Lieutenant Darren James, and Firefighter Zach Pearl acted as part of an honor guard for the Newfoundland Association of Fire Services annual memorial service for fallen provincial firefighters. Memorial service was webcast live on October 17th, 2020. Fire Department, in coordination with the CAO and Director of Recreation and Community Services, has made arrangements with the local girl guide groups for them to utilize space at, space at Station One, the Portugal Cove side, for their meetings on Wednesday and Tuesday evenings. This poses no obstruction to the Fire Department operations, and the Department was happy to be able to assist with this organization. Specifications for the new truck are taking a little longer than anticipated. 1,500 gallon tank spec at the, is the maximum for single axle design and will pose structural and CAD design limitations in order to maintain a single axle design. The crew cab needs, the crew cab needs and maneuverability of a single axle outweigh the maximum tank capacity need and therefore the tank will need to be reduced to 1,250 gallons. Many agreed to the reduction in tank size in order to maintain a single axle design. Item number three, other business, excessive noise. Multiple excessive vehicle noise complaints have been received and continue to be widespread concerns throughout many municipalities. The group, Pipe Down NL, have approached the town through the Northeast Avalanche Joint Councils with a request to send a letter of support to the province and the RNC to advocate for continued action on the issue of excessive vehicle noise. The committee and mayor agreed to send this letter of support. 3.2 Fire Hall Renovations Update. Fire Hall Renovations continue, and there have been two requests for change orders. One has been approved and confirmed as an essential change, and the other is being researched prior to this decision. So I end my report. Thank you very much. And we have administration and finance, and Councillor Stuart Sharp, if you'd be so kind. Thank you, Your Worship. Administrative and Finance Committee met Wednesday, October 21st. Present was uh, Deputy Mayor Jeff Lahan, Councillor Harding, myself, uh, Tony Pollard, CAO, Director of Finance of, and of Operations, sorry, and also present was uh, Colleen Murray, Town Clerk, and Carol McDonald, Mayor. Number one, Finance Account for Payment, October 21st, 2020. 20, the motion reads, committee recommends that the council approve payment of regular accounts in the amount of $30,086.05 and capital accounts in the amount of 
$73.35 for a total of $291, uh, dollar, sorry, $291,159.40. So, seconded for that. Seconded by Councilor Hardy. Any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number two, administrative. Uh, request for tax relief. The Royal Canadian Legion Branch 10, located at 5 to 9 Legion Road, submitted a request for a business and property tax relief. As per past practice, the town considered the request and will make the following motion. Motion reads, committee recommends that council exempt property tax in the amount of $1,445.60 and a business tax in the amount of $1,801.44 for the Royal Canadian Legion Branch King. So moved. Seconded by Councillor Hanlon. Any questions? Uh, yes, yes, Mayor. I'm just following up. Uh, town clerk was going to check to see what uh, what we did in the past. Where I'm a member of the Legion, I don't gain anything directly, but uh, any monies left in the coffer, I guess, I gain from indirectly in our programming. So, um, what have we done in the past in regards to me not taking part in this uh, this voting procedure? Um, one year, one year. The first year you stepped out, and the second year you stayed in, Councillor. Okay. So, what is the wish of council in this particular case? There's no conflict, Daryl. Okay. Thank you. If we agree to let you remain and vote. Okay. Thank you. All, all in favor? Aye. Uh, 2.2 water loss conservation program. Committee reviewed the status of the meters and found there were approximately 60 addresses throughout the town that volunteered for a water meter. Staff will investigate why the data shows some houses are using two to three times the water, uh, the amount of water as others are using. And so Thank you very much. Uh, is there any uh, any correspondence? There was no correspondence this Thursday. Oh yes, so there was. But I think that was in one of the reports. Yes, the traffic comments. Yes, the traffic comments. Okay, is there anything else? Any further business from any of the councillors? Councillor Mary? Councillor Roger? Councillor Stuart Sharp? Councillor Hanlon? Councillor Hardy? Uh, yes, Your Worship. I became aware today, I don't know if everybody else is aware, that one of our volunteer firemen has had some bad news about the health of a child. And I just wanted to bring it to Council's attention so that we can show our uh, our support for uh, for the family in this difficult time. Yeah, uh, I agree. I totally forgot about it. I knew about it too. Seven-year-old boy, Virginia. Anyway, is that it? Anybody with anything further? Thank you very much, Daryl, for this. I totally forgot. Okay, somebody move for adjournment. Moved by Councillor Hanlon and seconded by Councillor Neary. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll just... okay we're now recording for the October 27th, 2020 public after session. Okay, now it's your turn. Anybody on the line there that would have a question for us? Comment? Show a brick or a rose? I have a question. Robert Stapleton here. Okay. And I guess it's pretty timely given the problems I've had to try and connect. And I'm just one of the reports and so forth. But uh, open public meetings, learning how to resume. Uh, we'd like to go to our uh, CAO for that because he's up with the uh, COVID. Uh, I'll be on the spot. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> whenever like space limitations allow for for greater gatherings, we could move, I guess, to a uh, to the uh, recreation center, I guess, and, and and allow public meetings. It's just a matter of the organization around that and 
and we'd have to know how many people are going to show up, that type of thing. So there would have to be some type of registration process. However, we haven't really given a whole lot of, of, of thought around the logistics of that, but you know, uh, as, as things move on and, and things loosen up, we would have to look at it again for sure. Yeah, I certainly think it's good, you know, and again, considering what's happened here, we try to get online there. It certainly worked uh, a discussion and stuff. We had kids on buses and run the school and all that kind of stuff. I would take Michigan and Pacific County because lots of businesses open and doing all kinds of stuff. So, I don't believe there's anything else. Uh, Michigan, I don't know. Secondly, uh, street names. Uh, I see there in one of the reports. do exist Robert and uh, we talked about it at our meeting uh, where the request came in and the names will be going to the Heritage Committee for their input. Okay great thanks. Okay thank you. That's it for me thanks. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. In relation to Mr. Stapleton's question at this time there I don't believe there are any municipalities that have returned to public um, opening change to public meetings. I, I personally don't know. I haven't heard of any. Who's Cove has, but they usually have one person. It, it, it's, it's not a, right. it's a, it's an accommodation thing, I guess, really, in terms of we really have no who's going to attend when or figure out the spacing around okay. who can actually go there and the size of the building. Thank you. Well, I guess we could do yeah. the church and stuff. We don't have many in anyway. So. No. Uh, Mary, Mary's town, Mary's town has has reopened their public meetings. I'm just online here. Um, Mary's town has reopened their their public meetings, but there's none other listed on the website. Robert, what were you saying there? Was there a comment about the church or something? Mary's open public meetings. No, what I said was uh, it's a registration pro process for church. So you email ahead. So I guess you may be able to do it on that quote. Well, but yeah, you know, we have to limit the number and know exactly how many people are coming in. And if you first register, I guess we do want to get the same. Yeah, there are definitely protocols around, but we'd have to lay out space and, and, and look at how many people we can accommodate and then have some type of registration or signing process just for, for contact tracing guidelines that are out there. I have to uh, I have to also correct my statement I apologize Sam just said no it's reading wrong they have eliminated all public in present committee meetings they are going uh, totally virtual from here on in by a motion of council so I apologize for that you talk about Mary's down correct yes. that's correct ma'am yes thank you Okay, it's something we talk about now at the uh, committee or council at all. Okay, before we go, uh, Catherine's on the line. Do you have a question, Catherine? Oh, okay, great. Thank you very much, Mr. Stapleton and uh, Catherine Wilbur. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Guys, I've seen a fundraiser going around the Brookside Intermediate School for the the young child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a couple of like um, you know 